Right, I'm going to show you about lenses. Now there's two types of lenses. You've got a convex lens, which is thin at the top, thin at the bottom, and thick in the middle. And you've got a concave lens. That is the opposite of that. It's thick at the top and bottom, and thin in the middle. And to remember that this is a concave lens, it goes in like a cave. Now you need to know how light travels through these lenses. Now this convex lens is also known as a converging lens because it converges the light, which means it brings the light together. We want to be together. When light travels through it, the light all meets at a certain point. If I draw five rays of light entering the lens, all the light focuses at that point F. So the light comes together, it converges. Converges means come together. This is the concave lens. Concave lens, it's also known as a divergent lens because it spreads the light out. Diverge means spread out. So once again, we draw five rays of light, enter in the lens, the ray straight through the middle just goes straight again. Now these rays are going to spread out and the focal point is actually on this side because as these rays spread outwards they appear to be focused here. So this ray appears to come from this focus point here. Now because it's not actually coming from that point, you draw that line as a dotted line which means it's a virtual ray, it's not real. Real rays are always a solid line. How much does this ray spread out? Well, once again, it's as if it appears to come from this focus point. And this ray. Comes down here. This ray comes down there. You always draw arrows on a ray if it's a real ray. You don't draw arrows on these blue lines because they are virtual rays, they're not really there. You're also supposed to be able to draw a ray diagram to show how an image is formed from a convex lens and a concave lens. A convex lens, instead of drawing it like an artist would, we can draw it just like that. That's the symbol for a convex lens. And this is the symbol for a concave lens. And the way I like to think about it is if I was to draw that there and that there, well that looks like the convex lens. 
does the draw that there and that there. That looks like the concave lens. Now this position F, that's what we call the focal point. And this distance between the centre of the lens, which is what we call the lens axis, and the focal point, that's called the focal length. Now the power of the lens describes how quickly it bends light that passes through it. A more powerful lens is more curved and bends the light more. If you had a bicep and the bicep was only thin, whereas you had another person who had a really big bicep, is person one or person two the most powerful? Well, it's obvious that person two is more powerful because their bicep's really big. This is supposed to be the fist on the top of the arm. <laughs> Now, if we think about a lens then, so if we've just got a thin lens compared to a thick lens, the power of a lens tells you how quickly it's going to bend the light. So this thin lens takes a long time, takes a big distance to bend the light. So the focal point is quite far away from the lens. So a thin lens means low power. You'll end up with a long focal length. Because the glass doesn't have the power to bring it in really quickly. It takes its time. It takes a long time to bend the light, if you like. Whereas this thick lens, very powerful. It's capable of bringing the light in to a focus very quickly. High power. Short focal length. So I'll just relate the thickness of the lens to the thickness of a bicep. Can't go wrong. Now there's five different rear diagrams that you need to be able to draw for the convex lens. And there's one rear diagram that you need to be able to draw for a divergent lens. A concave lens. Now I've decided that the focal length of this lens is going to be 1, 2, 3 centimetres. So that will be F. 1, 2, 3 centimetres here, that will be 2F. And also on this side, 1, 2, 3, that will be F. 1, 2, 3, that will be 2F. Now the object could be between the lens and F, at F, in between F and 2F, at 2F, and beyond 2F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different objects. So I'll show you how to draw the rear diagrams one at a time. For a concave lens, you always end up with the same rear diagram, so it doesn't really matter where you put the object. So I'll just draw the object here. When you're drawing the rear diagrams for the lenses, always draw in the principal axis. And then draw in the lens axis. So this is for a convex lens. Now just say the examiner says that the focal point is three centimeters, focal length. I mean 
means that the focus point is there. And that's on either side. So 2F, twice the focal length, would be another three centimeters there. And also on that side. Now the first object, we'll place outside 2F, so beyond 2F. So I'll just pop it there. Now there's two rules for drawing the ray diagrams. You've got to draw two rays. Now the first ray goes from the top of the object and just goes straight through the middle of the convex lens and keeps going. It keeps going straight. And the second ray always comes from the top of the object as well and it travels parallel to the principal axis until it gets to the lens axis and then it goes through the focal point on the right hand side because it's a convex lens which is otherwise known as a convergent lens so the light is going to converge which means come together so if we go through the focal point Then where the two lines meet, that's where your image is going to be. Now you need to compare the image to the object in three different ways. You have to talk about the size. You have to say whether it's real or virtual. And you have to say whether it's upright or inverted. So this particular image Compare the size of the image to the object. So the object's two centimeters tall. This image is only 1.2 centimeters. So the size is smaller. Is it real or virtual? Well, if it's formed from real rays, and it's a real image, we know that these rays are real because I haven't had to draw them with dotty lines. They haven't went backwards on themselves. They've kept on traveling over to the right. That'll become more clear when I show you some of the other diagrams we're gonna draw. Now the object's pointing upwards and the image is pointing downwards. So it's inverted. And a lens like this is used in a camera, telescope, or the human eye. And that's when the object's beyond 2F. What if the object is at 2F? Well, we use the same two rules. The first ray comes from the top of the object, goes through the middle of the lens, and just keeps going. And the second ray of light, once again, goes parallel to the principal axis, until it gets to the lens axis. And then it goes through the focal point on the right hand side to converge the rays. Now you'll notice then that the image is formed at 2F. So when the object is at 2F, the image forms at 2F. So because of that, the image one, two, one, two. It's the same size as the object. It's real, as it's formed from real rays, which could be projected onto a screen, and it's inverted. Because the object's pointing upwards, but the image is pointing downwards. Sorry, I've misspelled image there. <laughs> And the image is a bit wonky as well. Sorry about that. Uses, if they did ask you, telescope. This time we'll put the object 
between 2F and F. So the rules are the first ray goes from the top of the object straight through the middle of the lens and just keeps going. And the second ray also comes from the top of the object, goes parallel to the principal axis until it hits the lens axis and then it goes through the focal point on the right hand side. And where the rays cross, that's where the image forms. I've spelled image right this time. <laughs> now if we compare the image to the object, the object is two centimeters. This image is three. So the image is bigger. You can see magnified. It's real. So it's formed from real rays which can be projected onto a screen and it's inverted because the image is pointing down whereas the object is pointing up. Magnification equals image height divided by object height. The image height is 1 to 3 centimeters so we'll divide that by the object height 1 2 centimeters so the magnification will be one and a half and there's no units because the units cancel out centimeters divided by centimeters that cancels out or if you were doing it in millimeters that would be millimeters divided by millimeters and the units would still cancel out rear diagram number four if the object is at f The first ray goes from the top of the object, goes down through the middle of the lens. And the second ray goes parallel to the principal axis, parallel to the principal axis until it meets the lens axis. And then it goes down through the focal point. Now what you'll notice here is that these two rays are parallel. They're never going to touch on this side. And if we go back, if I'd drawn me diagram absolutely correctly, they would be parallel on the other side as well, where they would never touch. You can see if we do go far enough that way my, from my diagram it will touch, so that's a little bit of a mistake. So because the rays never cross, the image never forms. Now the use of this would be a searchlight. Perhaps from a lighthouse. We place the bulb of the lighthouse at the focal length of the lens and the light will just go out as a parallel beam. It'll never focus, it'll just keep on going forever if the bulb was powerful enough, that is. Any rays that go over to the right are real rays. Draw them solid and put arrows on them. Now these rays here, because I've had to draw them going over to the left, they are not real rays. So we draw them with dotty lines and don't draw arrows on them. Rear diagram number five with the object between F and the lens. Now this is a bit tricky to draw. So one ray goes from the top of the object and goes through the lens axis. The second ray is drawn parallel to the principal axis and then it goes through the focal length. It's always the same two rules. Now, you can see that these two rays will never meet on the right hand side. So we're going to have to draw backwards with a dotty line 
and see if they meet over here somewhere. That's a dotty line because these are not real rears. Remember, whenever you go over to the left, these are going to be virtual rears. The rears are not really there. Now you can see that the rears have crossed about here. It's tricky to see because I've used these fat pens. You'd get a more accurate picture if you used like a thinner pen when you draw on these. I just needed to make sure that it was nice and thick so it was shown the video. Now you can see the image compared to the object. The image is a lot bigger or magnified. It's virtual because it's formed from virtual rays. It would not be able to be shown on a screen because it's not actually there. And it's upright this time. It's the only time it's been upright. The object's pointing upwards and the image is pointing upwards, so it's upright. Uses of this lens, magnifying glass. Or the eyepiece lens, or a microscope, or a telescope, or binoculars. Now if you had to work out the magnification, you just do the image height divided by the object height. So in this case, the image height is 6 centimeters, and the object height is 2 centimeters. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and the centimeters cancel out by the centimeters. Whenever you're doing the magnification, it's got no units. We usually measure the image in centimeters or in millimeters, and the same as the object. So that's the five rear diagrams for the convex lens. You only need to know one rear diagram for the divergent lens because the image is the same every time. That's the symbol for the divergent lens, remember? Otherwise known as the concave lens. Now remember, divergent means spreading out. I'll do the focal length as three centimeters. 2F obviously just means twice the focal length. And I'll just draw the object here. Now the rules for drawing the rear diagram are slightly different for the concave lens because the concave lens diverges the light. So we know that the light needs to spread out on this side. The first rule is the same for the first rear. Goes from the tip of the object straight through the middle of the lens and keeps going. Now the second rear, it also starts off as it did before parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis until it hits the lens but we know that the light is going to come up this way somewhere now how far up that way up there a little bit a little bit more a little bit more how can you tell well this is how you can tell. Where the light hits the lens axis, put your ruler going from there down to the focal point on the left hand side, not the right hand side. Now this is a virtual ray coming down as we're drawing it to the left so it's not real remember and then as it comes over to the right it would be real so it's solid and it needs an arrow. Now, where the two rears cross, that's where your image is going to form. And it doesn't matter where I put my object, between the lens and F, at F, between F and 2F, at 2F or beyond 2F, you're gonna get the same picture all the time, the same rear diagram. And the image will always be smaller, and the object upright because this is pointing upwards and the object's pointing upwards and it will also be virtual because it's formed from at least one virtual rear if something's formed from at least one virtual rear then it's a virtual image now it's just like anything in life you get better at it the more you practice 
You've probably never done rear diagrams before, so how do you expect to be good at them first time? You didn't learn to ride a bike straight away, did you? You kept on practicing. So if you want to master these rear diagrams, then just keep practicing them again and again and again. I hope this video has helped you. You should now be able to draw the rear diagrams for a convex lens and a concave lens. You should know about magnification. Remember, magnification equals image height divided by object height. In this case, the image height is one centimeter. The object height was two centimeters. One divided by two is a half. So the magnification is a half. In other words, the image is half as big as the object. So you should know the factors that affect the power of a lens. You should know how concave lenses and convex lenses refract light. You should know when the lenses produce either a real or a virtual image and how to draw all the rear diagrams. Thanks very much. See you in the next video. Bye for now.